All right, in this video, we're looking at how to use the graphing calculator to perform an ANOVA procedure for a completely randomized design. So let's read the problem first to confirm it is, in fact, an ANOVA procedure that we need. It says glue strength. Four adhesives that are used to fix porcelain to teeth are tested in a completely randomized design. So completely randomized design tells me it's a CRD experiment. It says the experiment bonds porcelain to teeth and then a machine is used to pry the tooth from the porcelain. The amount of force needed to do this for each bond is recorded. So they're going to record forces for each of the bonds. It says use the results below and a 1% significance level to construct an ANOVA table to test the claim that there is a significant difference between the bonding strengths. Okay, so what we're doing here is uh, clearly an ANOVA procedure because it tells us that we're using ANOVA is for a completely randomized design experiment. They want to test the claim that there is a significant difference between the bonding strengths and we're using a 1% significance level. Let's take a look at the data itself in the problem. Alright, so there's the data and if you look at it carefully here it's basically columns. So this would be like the bonding material 1, bonding material 2, bonding material 3, and then 4. And these are essentially the strengths of the bond. It's the amount of force the machine needed to pry the porcelain from the teeth, right, after they adhered it with the different adhesives. All right, so what you want to do in your calculator is to enter all this data into list. So that's our first step. So we're going to press the stat key. First turn your calculator on. You're going to press the stat key. And you're going to go to where it says edit. That's the first one in the option list there. So stat and enter gets you to this screen. Now once you're in the screen, you're going to just enter these values straight down the line as you see them. So all the numbers in one column go into one list. So we're going to need four lists here to fill this in. So let's start with the first one. 204, 181, 203, uh, 262, 230, and 288. Alright, so those are entered in. We'll get the next one now. 197, 223, 232, 207, 223, and 197. All right, so that's that. Then we move over to the third list. It's 264, 226, 249, 255, 237, and 240. And then finally over to the fourth list there. The fourth list has stuff in it in my calculator, so I'm going to go clear that. Remember how we do that? We arrow up to where the top of the list is highlighted. We hit the clear button, and we push down, and that erased that column, so it's empty now. And then we do 248, 138, 220, 304, 268, and 276. Okay. So quickly you just scroll past to make sure that every value looks correct. It should all be three digits it looks like. So it looks like all that's correct. And you know, hopefully I didn't make any typos because of course if you put the wrong data in, you'll get the wrong output. Once you have all the data listed into the four different lists to represent the four different columns of data, you're gonna press the stat key one more time. So press the stat key. You're gonna arrow over to where it says tests. And you're going to scroll all the way down to where it says ANOVA. Now this should be very at the bottom of the list, so it's actually faster if you push the up arrow. You go up right to the last option there, which is ANOVA. So in my calculator it's option F, but once I highlight ANOVA there, I hit enter. And now the calculator is blinking at me. It wants to know what lists are involved in the calculation. So I'm going to tell it list 1. So I'm going to hit second and the number 1. Then I'll hit the comma key, which is right above the number 7 on my calculator comma, and I'll hit second, number two, which tells me I want list two. Then again, comma to separate the next one, second, list three, so I'll hit second and number three, and then comma one more time, and second and four, and that tells me list four. Close the parentheses, hit enter, and the calculator grinds away and gets us a solution. Okay, so what it gives you in your calculator, it's going to give you the particular F value, which is your test stat. It gives you the P value for the test. This is how you can run the hypothesis test. If we go back to the actual problem here, we can see that it was a 1% significance level involved in the test. Our P value is 43%. So that's a large P value. That means we do not reject HO because this is 1%. It's smaller than the P value. We do not reject the large P's. So then we have the factors, degrees of freedom 3. We have the um, sum of squares for that factor, we have the mean square for that factor. Remember the factor is actually the, um, the in this case, the adhesive, correct? Then we have the error. And for the error we have its degrees of freedom, we have its sum of square value. If you scroll down we get the mean squared value for that. 
And then we have this quantity here, which is not really that important for us, but it's the pooled um, standard deviation, basically an estimate of the pooled variance. We don't have to worry about that, though we don't use that too much. But we do have the sum of squares and the MS, so we can fill in the ANOVA table at this point. We have everything we need to complete that. All right, so that's it. That's basically how to use your calculator to perform an ANOVA procedure.